Hello, this is Reverend Doré Jacques Patlian, teaching the perennial philosophy that goes back to Plato through the original teachings of Jesus and all the way up through modern times. It has the thread of truth of every great religion within it. When you strip it out of all the dogma and man-made stuff that's thrown in, we call it religious science or the science of mind. Today, let's talk about is anything perfect? Is there such a thing as perfection? You know, when I was a lad, my father used to regularly tell me, son, there's no perfection on this earth. We're all flawed. I think he told me this in an attempt to make me feel better about being born with cerebral palsy, which I'd largely overcame by the power of affirmative prayer, but it left me being less than graceful and totally hopeless on the ball field. Not only was I the last kid picked on a team, I was often the only one not picked at all. I guess I felt a bit like damaged goods, and Dad was trying to point out that nothing and no one was without flaw or defect in some way or another, and that I had a lot of comfy on this earth. Dad pointed out that I was not, not the only one in the family with challenges. He was vertically challenged. He was only five foot three but overcame that by spending uh, most of his free time at the YMCA and making himself into a five foot three mass of muscle. He looked like a very short fire plug. He told me that some men make their way with their brawn and physical skills and some with their brains, and his advice was to use my brains. He was a great dad, but he was a firm believer in human imperfection. How about you? Is there any perfection on earth or in the universe? Is everything just a cosmic mistake or an accident? Are we all fatally flawed? My answer would be that it depends on your definition of the word perfect. If you define perfect as being without flaw, defect, or blemish, then there's nothing physical on this earth that would qualify. Even the most lovely diamond has a flaw lying deep within it somewhere. The most wonderful person has a dark secret or a character weakness or a flaw someplace in their makeup. Even Jesus threw a royal tantrum in the court of the temple by smashing the stalls of the money changers. That outburst led directly to his execution just one week later. He had made blood enemies of the high priests of the temple by destroying the income they derived from the money changers. The lesson in this story is never mess with anyone's money. Would life on earth look different if we looked at perfection from God's view from a distance? By the way, that's a great song. If you if you remember From a Distance by Kathy Matea, she made the prettiest version. Or Bette Midler, who had a million sellers singing it. Check it out and listen to that song. You'll see what we're getting at in this podcast and this post. What if perfection meant that everything in the universe came from a perfect mind, a perfect being, and a perfect soul that we call God, for lack of a better name? From perfection must come perfection, because dogs don't give birth to cats, and war never brought lasting peace. It only sows the seeds of the next war. Hate does not bring love, and darkness never creates like. The lesson is that like begets like. What if divine perfection was the great law of the universe? What if perfection really means that everything, including you and I, was designed as it was supposed to be, with no error or mistake on the Creator's part? What if these things we see as flaws, blemishes, or defects were put there purposely by a mind so vast as to be beyond our comprehension? What if God knows exactly what he or she is doing and so engineered these defects, in quotes, in? Why in the world would God make us with defects? Perhaps we were made with flaws so that we had something to overcome or use as a learning experience while we're on this short physical journey. You know, we're not here to be in a giant sandals, all-inclusive resort. This earth is a place of growth, 
learning, and expansion of our minds and our souls. It's a way station on our, on our eternal soul journey. We can grow, learn, and become more perfect, or we can opt out and do this experience over again. Kind of like having to take a class over in summer school when you flunked it in high school. The choice is ours. Indeed, that is the one great truth about life. The choice is always ours. We write the script of our life. We speak the blessing or the cursing each day on our life with our thinking, our speaking, and our choosing. Why was I born with cerebral palsy? I believe that I created that experience on the soul level so that I could overcome it. And generally speaking, I have. You'd never know I had it if you met me. I had a lot of help from my mother who refused to accept the medical verdict of paralysis, palsy, motor damage, probable blindness, and very likely institutionalization, which is what they did with kids in my condition when I was born in the 1940s. She just could not see her baby boy as a cripple, as kids like me were called. I remember being called a CP kid by other kids. Stands for cerebral palsy, of course. After exhausting all medical solutions, she sought a spiritual solution by going to hear a lecture by Dr. Ernest Holmes, the founder of religious science, which is the science of mind philosophy. We're more of a philosophy than a religion, a little bit like Buddhism. Buddhism is really a philosophy. We are not like Buddhism, but in the sense that we are a philosophy. Dr. Holmes told my mother that every condition began in mind. Therefore, there was nothing that could not be healed or created through the application of spiritual principle and mental science. That included me. He taught my mother a technique called spiritual mind treatment or affirmative prayer, which is basically the way the master teacher Jesus prayed. God already knows what you need and want before you ever ask. We should pray as if we already have what we need or desire because in truth we do. Our need or desire is waiting for us within to feel worthy enough and get our ego out of the way enough in order to receive it before it become, can become a reality in our lives. Thus the purpose of prayer is not to get God to do something for us because God's not a cosmic vending machine but rather to prepare our minds to receive the good we already have. The whole universe operates by the law of cause and effect. I call it the mother law of all creation. We are the cause of our life experience, and the effect is our personal reality. The mind controls your body, your health, your wealth, your love, and your life. Going to cause is the only solution to any problem, but as human beings we find it ever so much easier to fiddle with the symptoms or the effects and move them around and expect to get different results. Doesn't work. That's like rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic. Messing with the effects cures nothing. The ship sank anyway, didn't it? It may alleviate the symptoms, but it won't cure the problem. And I wish modern medicine would figure that out because all they do is use surgery or give us a pill to cure the symptom, which doesn't cure the illness. Only getting to the cause heals the problem, and the cause is in our thinking and our consciousness. Heal thinking and believing, and we heal our lives. And that's what we do as religious science scientists and what I do as a religious science minister. I help you to understand who you are, how you work, how life works, and teach you how to use the tools to transform your life. What if we all stop thinking of ourselves as junk, damaged goods, or a mistake? What if we celebrated ourselves as perfect beings, perfect creations of a perfect creator? And God is your creator, you know. Your parent is your mom and dad. What if we realize that what we see as flaws and defects are just part of our unique template that we came into this experience with? What if our imperfections are just the curriculum of our personal course of study? Every human on this planet was born with a talent, a dream, a challenge, and a flaw, either in body, mind, or character. The secret of life is in what we choose to do with these gifts and challenges. We can overcome or buckle under. We can be victorious or a victim. 
We can live well and die with a satisfied smile on our lips or die cursing the coming dark. It is all our choice, but no one can take this cup from our lips, not even God. Celebrate your perfection as I do. Make the most of every minute of this wondrous journey we call life. Know that you really cannot be hurt, that the essence of you is immortal and invincible. You are an eternal being that, in truth, never really dies. Only the body dies. You're a magnificent work of the great architect, the divine mind, the creator. However you choose to conceive of that divine mind that started the entire process of life and begat the universe. Until we are together again, be well, be happy, and listen to the voice of the indwelling God. Some call it the Holy Spirit, and that's just fine, within you. This is Reverend Doray Jacques Patley, and inviting you to check out all of my 111 video podcasts on youtube.com slash revdor. This post will be a podcast very soon, so watch for it. Want to know more? Find the nearest Center for Spiritual Living and attend a Sunday uh, service or sign up for a class. We're big on classes, you know. It might just change your life. Go online to csl.org and check it out. Until we're together again, bye-bye for now.